Well, all right. Thanks, everybody. <clears throat> a lot of fun with these scales. I'm telling you what. Two chords in that progression, E major 7. Glorious. And, um, and basically the equivalent of a C dominant chord. I had a C9 happening in there. And with the sharp 11. Oh, thick and glorious and all kinds of fattening. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. All right, so let's talk about <clears throat> the approach that we can take with figuring out what scales are appropriate for each chord. So with the major seven chord, that sounds like it's the foundation of the key. You can assume um, that we're playing the tonic chord or the one chord. Um, major seven chords exist in two places, at the one chord and at the four chord, right? Um, so this to me just sounded like it was the one chord. Um, so I treated it as such by playing uh, variations of the major scale. Sorry about those notes. Some of those notes were good notes. And then, when it goes to the dominant chord, the C9 chord, first off, C, as an individual scale tone, doesn't exist in the key of E, so we know that there's going to be some sort of key change, perhaps something modal going on, when we go to that harmony. So, how does C, how does C react with, uh, with E major, right? It's the sixth scale degree, but specifically C is a flat six. All right, cool. So, we're playing some sort of C scale over the ninth chord. Whenever you're playing a dominant chord, the first thing that, that comes to mind immediately is uh, is mixolydian, right? Flat seventh scale degree in an otherwise major sounding scale. Uh, flat seven, leaves us hanging. Very nice. And then what I often do um, is start to look for scale degrees that um, uh, I can tie together with where uh, the harmony came from. Like in E major, there's four sharps, F sharps, uh, F sharp, C sharp, uh, G and D sharp, G sharp, D sharp. That's what I meant to say. Uh, I look for tones that are not inherently part of the C chord that I could potentially modify in my scale. So the C chord consists of C, E, G, B flat, and D, right, for the ninth chord. Um, if I added in, um, you know, sharp 11, there's an F sharp. If I didn't play the F sharp in the chord, it's kind of like an implied, uh, an implied tone, All right? Batman. So there's my C9 chord. So what I was doing when I was improvising is, is bringing in the F sharp, even though it's not part of the chord. Right? Um, so now I end up with this thing called, or with this, with this sound uh, called Lydian dominant. So that scale implies that there's a sharp four and a flat seven. So I have F sharp and B flat in the same scale. Um, B flat doesn't exist in the key of E, where, where we came from. Um, most of the notes in that scale don't, don't coincide with, uh, with the E scale. So it's a really interesting way to, um, to start to tie together two chords, but now melodically. <laughs> Because there's a G sharp in the key of E, um, if I were, if I wasn't playing the G as part of the chord or as part of the harmony, I could also stretch a little bit more um, by playing Lydian augmented dominant, which uh, suggests that there's a sharp four, sharp five, and a flat seven. Right, ready for this? So it starts to almost be like the whole tone scale in a way, except there's an A natural in there.
kind of cool. dominant. Check out the jam track for this. It's gonna be really, really pretty interesting. I'm just gonna be playing um, E major seven uh, for two bars, and then to C nine for two bars. And you guys can explore stretching a little bit. Start off with just the C mixolydian, um, but then also, um, then also branch out into C lydian dominant and C uh, lydian augmented dominant. Glorious. Have fun, everybody. Check back in. Let's write some comments. Get some get some discussion happening here. <laughs> All right. Enjoy your day. Be good to each other. Be good. Bye.